Hey guys, how's it going? It's been a while since I shot a video. I'm back out at the fort. Everything's looking pretty good. I was afraid that the snow would have melted a lot more and that the backlogs would have dropped. But it really looks to be about the same. I imagine because there's not much sun getting back into here. The plan for today is to get a fire going because I'm pretty chilled. To build onto the fort some more and make some bacon and eggs. I'm excited to be out here. I'm feeling good. It's a great day. Spring's on its way. Spring's right around the corner. I know it doesn't look like it from here with all the snow, but it is. Found a nice dry piece of maple on the way, on the walk in. So I think I'll split this up, bucket up actually, not split it, bucket up with my hawk and use it for firewood right off the hop. When using one of these things, good idea to cut on a diagonal. And that way you kind of really penetrating into the wood as opposed to just bouncing right out. Nice and easy, and this isn't no soft. This isn't soft wood by any means. Yeah, so two hits in the same spot, and then twisting it is all I need to do for this one. Every little piece of wood is going to be somewhat different, and then this is already pretty thick. Whereas I don't want to use it to start my fire, but I can use it for fuel. Ugh, that's a horrible sound. All right, gonna continue getting my small pieces first. This log is really working out here. I have to figure out a way to keep it in place. Or I guess it won't matter, but I will outline, maybe maybe outline my camp with logs after the snow goes. Those are drenched. We'll put those off to the side. Well, I've got all my fire prep done. I'm about to start my fire. Before I do that, I want to show you guys how I'm about to start it and what I think of it. So at the at Canoe Copia, where I Canoe Copia, where I was at um, a couple weekends ago, it was a big outdoor show, and there was a blacksmith there. I, and I can't remember the name of him. I'm sorry, I don't think it has a mark on here. But I bought a flint and steel pouch from the blacksmith. He was a really nice guy. Made some cool axes and stuff. So this is like a, I call it, it's a Sammy style, but to me it's always going to be the MCQ style. Um, little tinder pouch, got the antler button on there, all wrapped up with jute twine. So this is a flint and steel kit, flint and steel fire kit. You open her up, and inside there's going to be usually three things. I think we have, we have four things in here. So the first will be your steel, and this is a fire, or sorry, this is a... A steel, not a fire steel, it's just a, a steel. Fire, uh, this, is, this is a piece of steel. 
That's it. It's not a fire steel. It's not a ferrocium rod. This is a piece of steel. Like an old striker. A steel striker. Okay? And you hold it like that on your top knuckles. And then you're going to have a piece of flint. So this is obviously a flint and steel kit. And a piece of flint is just a piece of a rock. It doesn't have to be flint. Chert, jasper, uh, some quartz. Hard, hard rock will work. And the idea is, I'm sure you can see a couple of those, you strike the steel off of the rock and you shave pieces of molten steel off of the steel with the rock. It's not the rock sparking, it's the steel sparking. Okay? This is throwing some pretty decent sparks. Hope you can see it. Then the third thing in here, and this is what my thoughts are. This is why I think the flint and steel is completely redundant, and I think it's a novelty at this point. Back in the day, the trappers, everybody around, flint and steel, that's how it was. Or, or that little tinder tube with the cotton, but you still had to light it with a spark. So this is char cloth. This is literally charred denim, charred cotton, charred whatever. And you need this in order to make this work. Okay? So imagine this. Imagine you're out and say you lose your, your char cloth or you don't have any made or it gets wet. Because if this gets wet, it's done, right? And back in the day, they didn't have plastic. So they would have definitely used lighters, matches, fire, real fire steels, ferrocium rods if they had them, but they didn't. So imagine that gets wet. The only, there's a couple things that I know of in the Northern Hemisphere that you, that you can use that you don't have to char already. One being milkweed ovum, which is that little porous like thing in the middle of the milkweed, uh, not the fluff, but the, the little thing in the middle, the divider. Chaga, which is like a tinder fungus. And I think that's it. Maybe some punk wood sometimes, but you really do need to char the punk wood as well. So there's this thing called the fire chain, and I've done it. And I can actually, maybe I'll link it in this video if I, if I remember this time. You go out, you build a bow drill kit, right? You don't have a lighter, you don't have a fire steel, you don't have a flint and steel, nothing. And this is how it would have had to have been done in the back of the day. You go out, you build a bow drill kit. From that bow drill kit... You then find something natural in the woods or cut your jeans if you want to, but something like punk wood, like a mushroom, like chaga, like um, a cattail fluff, anything like that, and you char it. But obviously we're not going to have a tin either, right? If it's back in the day or if you mess up or whatever. So you don't have a, a tin, so you have to bury it under dirt, dry dirt. You have to smolder that, that, that piece of mushroom, say, until it's all charred up, like on the side of a fire, then bury it in dirt to completely snuff it out and then try to use this on it and hope it works. Meanwhile, it's delicate and it falls apart all the time. So, then you need a tinder bundle. And then, this is what he's got in here for a tinder bundle for me, just Cecil rope or jute twine. And you, you kind of undo it and make a bird's nest. And that's all fine and dandy. So there's, there's a lot of moving parts when you could just use one fire steel or one lighter or one match, what have you. That said, I understand this is fun. I get it, and I agree with it. And there's a nostalgic thing to do with it in my head. But I do think it's redundant, and I do think it's... Like, niche. Like, not niche. What was the other word I said earlier? Um, it's a parlor act these days, I think. So I'll show you how quick we can get it. So it's already caught. No, oh, and it's snuffed out. This char cloth is not great. It keeps going out. Hmm. Okay, we'll have to get a bigger piece of char cloth. Before I do all that, I'm just going to make and check and make sure you guys can see those sparks. And I am also going to, I'll show you really quick how I do this, unwind this stuff. And this isn't rocket science. I'm sure you, a lot of you guys know this. Unwind this stuff until you make a bird's nest. And then also, obviously, you can use cedar for this. You can use yellow birch. You can use uh, wood shavings if they're thin enough. You can use milkweed fluff or dandelion fluff or cattail fluff. Lots of things, lots of options. I've 
saw someone do it with dog fur before. It didn't work out very good. All right, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna get some more char cloth. I'll be back out with, be back out with you. I can't believe how cold it is today. It's been warm. It's been warm and I didn't dress <laughs> properly warm enough. Okay, so to get this on here, I'm using a lot of char cloth because it's very frail, very fragile. Normally I like to use like an old terry cloth or jeans because then this is has some structure to it. But anyways, what you want to do is lay your char cloth right near the edge and hold it with your thumb. And this is all breaking apart, so I'm sure it's going to do that as well. See, it keeps landing on it, and once it lands on it, it's supposed to just grow, but it's it's petering out. Mmm, this char cloth is no good. This char cloth is garbage. That sucks. I'm getting them to land, no problem. Just not staying. See it glowing? Two cameras would be nice. Anyway, she's going. She's going good. I just gotta get some more uh, twigs on there quick. I didn't even put my thin twigs on there. Oh, it's such a, such a kerfuffle. That's all right. She going. She going good. Such a kerfuffle. Right. Don't one stick it, right? All right, that's pretty solid. Happy with that. So as you can tell, I had a lot of problem with the, the char cloth catching and I used a good, probably half of the char cloth I had in there. So another lesson, another thing to think about. Um, gimmicky, gimmicky is the word, it is gimmicky. And, uh, but it is fun. And I like the kit. It's nice quality. Works good, obviously. Sometimes you get these steels and they don't work very well, but this one throws decent sparks. It's all it's all without using your wrist. Like don't use your wrist. It's like a locked wrist. Straight up and down method. Sometimes you skin your knuckles. Ah! Okay, I better get some more wood on this. Kind of build the fire larger, not just in one spot, kind of spread it out more. That's why I put these longer ones on. So it's the idea that the fire will travel. Oh, that fire feels so nice. First fire I've built other than at home, my, my wood stove in uh, probably three weeks, four weeks. Oh, the warmth. The warmth is nothing to be denied. Oh my goodness. Love it. Love the warmth. Come to me. I did add a little bit of yellow birch to that cinder bundle too. Like I said. So half of that char cloth is gone from one fire. So 
make your own char cloth if you're going to do this. Use blue jeans or use old wash rags or something like that. Kind of nifty. I want to make a tripod for cooking, for hanging my pot over the fire. This is about the size I need, just over my head. So this one's pretty fine. I can leave a couple little pokies hanging off of it, no big deal. <clears throat> but these two I gotta clean up big time. I brought this little hawk for this reason so I didn't have to swing my full size ax to try to clean things up. I still have a full size boys ax to use it if I need it. This is nice and light and sharp. Sharp as the Dickens. This guy is the one. You don't need to clean it all up because I don't need the full length of it. So let's, we'll measure it, cut it off, and then clean it up. So it's not even bad at all. It's right around there. Saw the Agua Canyon boys at, uh, new copia they hooked it up with the new saw and a, and a few new blades so I'll be testing out a couple new blades for those guys soon I've got I think I've got the dry wood blade on there right now all right and then I can use this Later on for a bunch of kindling, I'll break it up and put it up or lean it up in a tree or something because that's all good kindling. I like this little like ledge here, it gives me a workbench almost. I am gonna have to build something like this for when the snow melts. Okay, three decent sized pieces. Tie them up together. When you're tying a tripod, you want to make sure the bottom lines up. The top doesn't really matter, obviously, because the bottom's going to be on the ground. And out here, it doesn't really matter enough. Everything's uneven, and you can adjust it, but that's the way I do it. So I've got this really long piece of paracord with a Jolin already tied in it. So we're just going to use that to attach it. I left this out here, it's half frozen. I like being able to leave things here. Make it real campy. Real campy like, you know? 40, I mean 40, it's a fort, it's a fort. Let's get, a, let's get that straight. Alrighty. Okay, so I just kinda did that so they'd all be weaved together. And then now, you can see they wanna roll. Now they're gonna be tight. So now I'm gonna do my my fraps, or I go in between them and just tie the paracord itself, cinch it all together. And then really after that, it's pretty much done. I do want to leave the paracord long so that I have an option of raising up or bringing down my cooking pot when I need to. She tight, she tight. I'm just gonna tie it off. And call it good. Now I don't want this in my way at all when I'm walking, so I'm planning on putting two feet on that side, one foot on this side. Get it as secure as I can. Mm. 
there we go. Smoked Joe. Roast Joe. Okay, and then this paracord. Oh, she's smoky, bud. She's smoky. Woo! Oh, man, that's rough. The paracord can get cut. I'll leave it that long. Okay, I'll leave it a little bit longer because I can wrap it around the legs. I don't want to cut it too short. I will cut it extra long and then I'll wrap it around the legs to, to make up uh, height or lose height. Either way. So, like I say, if I don't want to use it, I'll just wrap it up there. Everything will be fine. I can even tie a little toggle to it so that I can slip it on and off. That's what I'll do. I'll tie a toggle. I'll tie a toggle. Timmy ties toggles. This looks like a good toggle right here. Don't really have to do much to make it fancy, but you can see, you'll see why in a second why a toggle is, is a good idea. So if I tie a toggle right in the middle, that means I can just slip it in and out of the bale on my cooking pot instead of having to like try and tie a loop or tying it on and off every time which would not make any sense at all. So with this, bales here, goes in the bale, hangs, handle I guess on mine. But. Okay, cool. And then when you don't want it, easily wrap it right around. Keep it out of harm's way. Actually, I could even hang it up like that. I could even hang something there. You know what I mean? Anyways, lots of options. Tripod is a success. My face is leaking, but on the way in I saw um, a score of three big fat tall trees that will go perfectly here and they're dead. So we're gonna go get those because I would prefer to keep going with the dead uh, tree method. Okay, and then I think I'll cook up some food. Bacon, bacon and eggs. snow that I had previously been walking on and pulling my sled on. So I had my snowshoes and pulling sleds multiple times and kind of packed down this trail, right? But well, watch this. So here's the trail I'm on. Go off the trail a little bit. Oh, all right. It's fine. Everywhere is fine. You can just walk then. Womp womp. I was punching through when I went off the trail. I think it's just because the sun's not out. All right, let's go find those logs, those trees rather. You could literally make a shelter in there. That's pretty cool. I can hear my fire. I can hear my fire. All right. two, three really decent sized ones that I'll probably be able to get at least two pieces off of each. And then a crappy one as well. So that's a pretty good score. I'm a ways from my camp now, but it's definitely, uh, definitely doable. So let's do this. You remember my 10 day trip alone when I was having to find firewood, getting into my canoe and trying to have to fall along the shore to find decent firewood. Completely exhausted, eating only pike. Remember that? That just brought me back to this. Me thinking I have to walk 200 yards back to my camp with all this is, is nothing compared to that. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. I get soft in the winter time, I think. All right.
I want to get the full length of the log, the tree, so I, I don't want to um, just cut it at the snow because, like, legit, there's another two feet underneath that. There we go. See, I'm not, I'm not talking out my butt. That's up past my knees. It's just all packed down now, and it's been raining and melting and all that. So it's, it's sturdy. That's why I can walk on it without snowshoes. A month ago, this would not have been possible. Okay. I'll probably be able to get out better now. Just have to cut it. Have to cut it down here. The price is way too high. You need to cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. All right. She's soaked. She's soaked, man. One down, two to go. Not gonna happen, eh? All right. I have to cut this one too. I was hoping to snap it off at the bottom, but as much as it's moving, and as much as I'm sure it's not connected to the ground anymore, she ain't coming out because of all the snow. Oh.
September. All right, here's where I'm at. Got my two big ones down. The third biggest one is hung up very good. You can see it's pretty tight in there and it's hung right up in the crook. Nothing I could really do about it, but what my plan to do now is, because I don't know exactly how long they need to be cut, I don't wanna just cut them in half and then potentially lose out on both pieces if they're too short, which I don't think the case is, but maybe I can get three, who knows. I point is I do want to cut them specifically the right size. So I'm going to bring my saw back to camp and we're going to bring one piece of wood back to camp. And then I'm going to find a small stick over there to measure. I'm going to bring my saw and that small stick back and cut the rest of the pieces here. So I won't, uh, I won't take you with me, but I will be right back here with l one less piece of wood, a measuring stick and my saw. All right, I'm glad I went and did that. The fire needed tending to, and I got this small stick that's gonna make everything uh, easier. I ended up getting two full pieces off of that piece that I brought back with very little room to spare. So I am happy I'm doing this. Um, this is hung up, but I, with, now that I know how long it needs to be, I can just cut it and the rest will fall down. At least that's the plan. going to pinch so I'm just trying to release the pressure Oh, come on. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I'm going to get this piece of wood. I am going to get it. It's so thick back in here. Okay. This one's dead, and this is part of the problem here. So I'm going to chop this one down back here. It's just too valuable to leave behind. Especially when it's dead, you know what I mean? Like. I wouldn't be doing this for a live piece. But speaking of which, there's tons on the ground from blowdown, from storms. Um, tree, this tree just snapped off right there. But I can collect all this for thatching material, which will come in handy. There's tons of it. I keep seeing it all over the forest floor. So that is handy. I sunk. And you can bet that I realize that once this snow melts, I know I'm going to have to redo my fort. And I've said this already, but I keep getting comments, even people at Canucopia saying like, Joe, what are you doing? You're building on snow. I know. I'm well aware. Okay, let's get rid of this guy. I 
as you can see, I'm not like, chopping overly hard. Just making some notches, making some marks, and then prying. Now I can really just knock this off with one swing, two swings, three swings. Yep. Okay. So that shouldn't be in the way anymore. Trying to get myself in here a little bit better. There we go. Or not. Come on, man. Way too much time with this, I know. I know. I think I got it. Nope. There we go. Bet you I could just measure it and cut it again. And that's that's definitely what I'm gonna do. She's down enough now. It's hard work. It's hard work out here fighting with trees. Bane of my existence. Wah! sure working up an appetite. Working up an appetite. I don't even know if this piece is long enough, but it's all down now. It's all down. Coming with me this time. Coming me, 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 me. Ah. All right, let's get these bad boys in place. See how much more we need. Trying to get them nice and snug. Nice snug fits. Looks good to me. A little bit of ice build up on the bottom of that, that other one. Creating some space between it and the next one. I might have to chip it off. Okay, not too shabby. Oh look, a little little hitchhiker. Hello.
getting there. We getting there. All right. That's all my logs for now. Now there's a couple things I don't like. See the skinny ones creating space at the top and the whole thing is kind of shifting to the left. And I understand why it's, they're not all even, but again, instead of worrying about all the little finite details right now, I do realize that I'm gonna to have to rebuild this whole fort very soon, probably within a month or two. No, within a month. Um, yeah, all the snow will be gone, hopefully. So. I'm not really concerned about those little finite details like I'm saying, but I am aware of it. It's looking cool though. Lots of wood structures going on, right? And we're getting there, we're getting somewhere. We're more than halfway filled the back now. And most of these, if not all, are dead. Oh no, not all, but most of them, most of them are. Okay. Like I said before, I can pick up like the spruce boughs that I find everywhere or the ones that I've chopped off from using the, the logs to thatch it later on. But um, right now I've worked up an appetite and I think it's time to get some bacon and eggs on. What do you think? Oh yeah, this is much, much more closed in now. It's feeling cool. It's got a really cool feel to it. It really does. All right, you know what? I might just, I might just take a load off here real quick and rest my back for a minute. Oh, oh, nothing wrong with that, eh? Nothing wrong with that, guys. So what I do need to do is get a bunch of firewood, get this fire rocking, and uh, cook my bacon and eggs. I did not bring anything to cook my eggs in. So we're gonna try the old poke a hole in the top and put them in the ashes uh, uh, deal. We'll see, not coals, ashes. Uh, because I've had them explode on me before. I haven't done this in years. And then we'll get some sticks, and uh, or we'll get a little spit going and, and put with sticks and cook bake our bacon that way. Um, but I do have to get a rock and bed of coals first. I will scrape out some and do the eggs beforehand because it takes those eggs quite a while. And then I'm fine because then they're just basically hard boiled and I'm fine eating those a little cool if they do cool down. I got two farm fresh eggs. These are not duck. These are chicken eggs today. We're gonna try to be gentle. Here. Oh, I cracked her. I cracked her, bud. Oh, snap. This is a failure already. All right. <laughs> it ripped. So we're going to be trying to be real careful here. Ah, oh, I did the same darn thing. All right, well, that's what I was trying to do. That, there. Not the other thing. Not cracking them. Oh, no. <laughs> well, it might be bacon and one egg or bacon and no eggs. We shall see. pretty hot that is pretty hot there okay we'll set them back a bit oh man this is so messy this is not working I have videos of me doing this successfully I swear one two oh that second one's not gonna happen she's already all broken Ow. All right, well, we'll see how that goes. Womp womp, Joe. Womp womp. Not quite tall enough, look at that. Anyway. 
that's decent actually for this for the bacon to sit there and smoke yeah it's a good height slow there slow smoke well I kind of just chill out and sit around for a bit I think I'm done for today building done building for today I got that tripod oh I'm gonna make a, a tee up but I got that tripod made I got a bunch more wood for the back found some bows and uh, yeah have some fun play with that flint and steel ruin some eggs you know car for the course all right yeah that's gonna be good that's gonna sit there for quite some time a little little 10 centimeter today little baby little baby Billy pot Billy pot I got my spork my tea ball and my bag of chaga mushroom tinder fungus anti-cancerous tea I'll brew up a lot of it and just kind of sip on it so we'll put that almost full there's my, my chaga it works well in the old tea, the mesh tea ball the old mesh tea ball Uh-oh, there we go. Um, I think I'm gonna put it in and boil it at the same time. It's totally fine with me. A little slow boil going. So here's where this toggle comes into play. Instead of messing around, just kind of the old set it and forget it type thing. So now she's on there and we'll set it in this perfect spot. Just set it here for one second. Oh, no, 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 set it here for one second. And then we'll fix it, fix it up. Pick seams up. Just trying to situate it the best way possible. I don't really want it bouncing off my bacon. My bacon dripping in there, so I'm gonna put it back on this side. Touch my bacon, bro. All right, then I can just kind of kick the fire over a little bit more. Go. Ah, my eggs, my eggs. Danger, danger. Ah! There's my glove. Don't ruin my eggs. They can't be ruined. Okay, sounds good. Looks good. Smells good. Good, good, good. There goes the egg. <laughs> I hope you guys heard that. Oh my goodness. Look at, there she went. It's just that's why it's important to have just a small hole like I did. Oh my goodness. I wonder if I can pull that out of there and eat that. That looks done actually. That yolk looks pretty solid. Oh yeah, she's done. Man. Like it's not, you know what I mean? It's not good. I'm not trying to pull the yolk over anyone's eyes. But look at the yolk. That's about as perfect as you can get. Wow. That's good. That's all you need anyways is the yolk, right? It's actually it's all cooked pretty well. Like I'm not losing out on most of it. I'm gonna pick the, the shell clean. So here's the top part of the shell. I'm only losing nothing, a tiny little bit. Got all that. Okay, maybe I'm gonna lose more out of this top part. That's okay. Yeah, whatever. This top part's a write-off. So I lost one third of the egg. It gives a bibble. Uh oh, one quarter. Okay, that's super tasty. Um, 
I'm gonna check on the other one now, obviously, because because that one was done. Okay, that egg is completely done. I'm just gonna set it just so it stays warm over ah over here, kind of away from everything. Um, I do have to kick up the fire and get that bacon going better because as of now. As of now, she's not really cooking that good. So we can take the fire back over this way and touch. There we go. I'm gonna tuck it back up a little bit so it doesn't get too singed. All right, I'm calling everything done. Get my bacon off of there. Put it right on my, right on my chair. Whole bacon chair. Don't drop any bacon, Joe. Off the bacon chair. Steaking, steaking. Keep this. Look at that. Look at the ease. Look at the toggle made ease. And then once you're done, well, bam, son. My eggy, eggy is done for sure. Okay, everything's squared away. All right, you wanna see my bacon? Can I show you my bacon? It's actually cooked good. This is obviously not the most efficient way to cook bacon, but it's, it's thoroughly cooked. Look, what's not cooked has definitely been smoked, and I'm excited to eat it. Cheers. I'm not really a fan of the crispy bits on bacon itself, but it's not so bad on this. But the smoked parts, oh man. Mm. Ridiculously good. The chaga tea is very dark. Extremely dark. We'll let that cool down for a bit. Well, that's doing its thing. Let's get this egg peeled. I can put the the egg in um, in my lid for my billy pot. Oh, she's cooked, man. She is cooked. So, how's everybody doing? I hope well. I did a live stream last night on YouTube, and I, I think I'm going to leave it up this time. I always take them down because they say stupid stuff. But I'm gonna think I'm gonna leave it up. So if you guys are bored or if you haven't had your Joe fix, there's a uh, there's a live stream up I did last night, which would have been Friday. There we go. Um, yeah, I talked about things going on. Sorry about the little hiatus. <clears throat> the, uh, the family needed to be together for a little bit and that's what we did. So, and it's not even a hiatus. I just didn't put up a video, uh, last night, which would have been Friday night when I did my live stream. I'm hoping to have this video out Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Today's Saturday. I do have to drive into the Sioux, uh, the city near me, which is about an hour away-ish, uh, to upload. So, and I can only do that uh, Monday to Friday. I can't do that on the weekend. So we shall see what happens. But it'll be out before Friday. And, uh, yeah, maybe another one too. I've been missing making them. Sitting back, 
well, spending time with the family, to be honest with you. We went to Windsor. Uh, I did that canoe copia uh, in Wisconsin, which was amazing. Thanks for every to everyone who came to, to say hi and to listen to the to the uh, presentations. Man, I was so like I never done a presentation before. I'm not joking. I, there was must have seen 300 people in there before the before the before the end of it. I did two shows in the main. They gave me the main uh, speaking room. Oh man, this egg is looking good. Yeah, they gave me the main speaking room and I packed it out both times. There's standing room in the back. And then I did a pool demonstration in a in a my pack boat in the pool, which is kind of cool. And there was a bunch of people in there. Made me really want to do some public speaking stuff. Like I can I can talk. You know? We all know I can talk. Alright, sorry, I gotta pause for this egg. Look at this. That's not what I meant to do. Oh, look, it's almost half soft on the bottom, and the rest is hard-boiled, hard-roasted. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Have them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. So, again... Made me think of doing some public speaking, and I'm gonna to try to get my butt over to. I got accepted to the to the adventure award show or the tra adventure travel show in Glasgow, Scotland. They want me to be a speaker, so that's pretty cool. We're just trying to work out the details in that. That's in September. Never been over there, but anyway, made me really want to do a little bit of public speaking. Go around, tell my story to to do maybe two or three major cities in like the states, Canada. Try to do some in the UK. It'd be cool. It's really nice to meet fans face to face, um, subscribers who've been around there since day one. Man, I went to Canoe Copia right after we had to put Scout down. You know how many people said sorry about Scout to me, and I know it was all in, in in the best wishes, and I understand that, and I'm not upset about it at all. But man, like five, six hundred people, I had to hear talk about Scout like two days after we put him down. <laughs> But I knew that's how it was going to be. And in all honesty, I wouldn't have went if we didn't have those like two months, three months of extra time with Scout. We knew he was going. You know what I mean? If this was just sprung upon us, I would not have went two days after I had to put my buddy down. <sighs> okay. Okay. <sighs> that was too big of a sip. Wow. Anyways, back to what I was saying. Went to Canoe Copia, got back, went down to Windsor for a week because my, my kid, Emerald, had uh, March break. And then got back and realized Scout wasn't there and just had to just had some spend, spend, spend some time with the family. So it was much needed and I'm, I'm glad I can do that. My tongue's burnt. My tongue is burnt. I'd love to go do that speaking uh thing in, in Scotland. Do a little UK tour and drive around, what is it, Caledon Forest? Caledon Forest there? Not getting away from me that easy. Well, other than scalding my tongue on that chaga tea, that was a really good lunch. And it took, and then again, other than that scalding hot chaga tea, it took no tools to, to, no cooking implements to cook it, right? You poked a little hole in the, in the egg, which you can obviously massacre and still <laughs> have it turn out all right. <laughs> if anything, it cooked better than the first one, um, even with exploding. And then the bacon, it's just on a stick. And it was completely cooked, both things, so yeah, I'm happy, happy with that. My tongue's cooked. Tongue's cooked as well. There we go. Be smart about it, Joe. There's not a breeze at all. Uh, 
Well, next time here at the fort, what I'm going to do is finish off the wall for sure and then uh, start piling spruce boughs here. Um, I do know where a lot are and I can bring my sled in as long as I get here before the snow melts, which I think I get here in the next couple days. Um, bring my sled in, pile a bunch of boughs on there and bring them here. Even to have them here, regardless if I start thatching it now or not, um, having them here will be helpful. And again, getting them here while there's still snow on the ground. Um, but you saw how much snow there is. I'm sure there won't be a problem. But uh, yeah, so fin finish the wall and then think about this. The side walls, right? You gotta get side walls built up on kind of a curved angle too, which might be a little bit of a difficult thing. And, but again, nothing has to be really in place permanently. Just as long as this stuff is here, and I can see like a rough way to go with it. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what it'll turn into once there's no snow. And then once the snow is gone, you know what I mean? Then it's gonna be stationary. It's, I'm not gonna move it again once the snow comes back. So again, this is why I'm leaving these pieces long overhang here, because once they hit the ground, they're gonna I'm gonna lose a bunch of height. I could still bring it in. I could still make it more straight up and down. Like it's pretty slanted as it is now. I can still make it much more up and down. And then we'll build a roof coming off of it. Honestly, some, similar to my other uh, cool bushcraft camp, the one I tore down before I moved. Um, that's it's really ideal. You know, you're completely co co protected in there. You're completely collected in there, completely protected in there, and uh, you have a fire under it and everything. So I think it's an ideal uh, shelter build. Fort, fort, fort. Bought a 85 millimeter lens prime. It's got a one point. 8 f-stop on it that's what I'll use for the intro I think for this video see how it goes it's a noisy lens it makes a lot of noise so I have to set it to manual so it doesn't uh, oh my goodness everything is falling apart uh, so it doesn't um, keep making uh, focusing noises I got a new oh yeah I told you I told you thanks guys thanks guys at Egoa Canyon get out of here been here since early this morning I'll go home edit this video and uh, hang out with the kid well she has no school so thanks for watching guys I really appreciate it I appreciate um, all the understanding all the support all the well wishes and just the outcry again for Scout um, there will be a surprise coming up very soon which uh, which will change our lives again so until then, I will see you next time. We'll come back to the fort soon enough and uh, finish off the back wall there. We'll do a little bit more building. Today was like a, yeah, today we still did a, a bunch of stuff. I had to walk a bunch. <laughs> we did a lot of stuff today, I, I swear. Thanks for watching, guys. You have a good day. I'll see you next time. Bye.